Hey everyone, my name is Brittany and I like to explore the systems marketed to photographers and creative small business owners. I find the tech, do some investigating, and report back with what I find so that you can see how the systems work and decide if they might work for you. If that sounds helpful, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. I feel like I'm in my follow-up era because today we are revisiting some AI editing platforms that I had face off a year ago and we're spicing things up a bit by adding two new AI editing bombshells to the mix. We got Aftershoot, Imagine AI, Narrative, and Filter Pixel all going head to head to see which one does the best with what I throw at them. I'm going to be looking at pricing, doing a system compatibility check, creating some profiles, timing how long the AI profile creation process takes, running some edits, and finally checking those edit results. I'll have timestamps in the description so you can hop around to whichever section interests you the most. As you watch this video, please keep in mind that this is all my own experience with these systems. You may have some different priorities than me when looking at an application, and I totally encourage you to use this video as a launching pad for your own testing. Each of these systems have a pretty generous free trial, and if you do test them for yourself, please let me know how it goes and which one gets the most points from you. Let's get this hybrid rematch, new battle royale started with the category that gives us our true first impression of the systems. Pricing. With FilterPixel, the workflow tier is the one that I would be the most interested in, and because they overhauled their entire system, that tier is significantly discounted at the moment. I'm not going to take the discount into consideration here because that won't last forever, and in a normal timeline, I want to know what I could expect to spend, which is $45 a month billed annually for two AI profiles, smart cropping, and straightening tools. Imagine goes the pay-as-you-go route, which still requires a minimum of $7 a month, and AI adjustments are a separate add-on. If you know you'll be using Imagine to edit tens of thousands of images, there is also an annual plan as well, but again, those AI adjustments, which range from a single penny to five cents, are an additional cost to consider. Sure, it's not a ton individually, but that is per image, and it can definitely add up. And then we have Aftershoot and Narrative, who have identical yearly costs. However, digging into what each one includes in their tiers starts to show the differences, most notably with the AI adjustment tools. Narrative's premium tier only offers AI straightening for $40 a month billed annually, whereas Aftershoot does cropping, straightening, and masking for the same price. Personally, I find the most value comes from Aftershoot's pricing model. It is an all-in-one system, so the price tag is going to be a bit up there, but it's straightforward and it does come with some nice add-ons. This next bit is going to be a little unique for me to include in a review, but because these systems rely on outside editing programs, I did want to talk a little bit about system compatibility. So. Let's dish. First and foremost, I need to thank a commenter on one of my previous videos for bringing this up to me. They had mentioned they weren't a Lightroom or Capture One user, so what are they to do? And honestly, I didn't have any solution for them, but it did make me curious to know what these systems are planning and if they really are genuine in wanting to provide solutions or if they're only interested in selling to the most popular user base, which as we probably all know is going to be Adobe and sometimes Capture One. So I reached out to Narrative, Aftershoot, Imagine, and Filter Pixel to see where their compatibility roadmap was and if their system would in fact work with other editing programs. The responses I got from Imagine and Narrative were kind of expected. Imagine said they currently only work with Adobe, and if I want to stay up to date with Capture One compatibility, I can fill out an interest form, which I have already done a couple times. Narrative said that while users can ship to Capture One for editing, if they want to train an AI profile, they have to be Lightroom users, and there is no mention of expanding that in the future. We can give them feedback on the other systems we use in their ship menu, so at least there's that, I guess. 
For Aftershoot and Filter Pixel, I was a little surprised by their responses. They each mentioned researching ways to make their respective apps independent of any other applications. This would mean no need for Lightroom, no need for Capture One. Users would cull, edit, and organize directly in the application. However, they aren't there yet. Currently, Aftershoot works best with Adobe and Capture One, while Filter Pixel's preferred is Lightroom. While it's kind of a whole lot of nothing, I am a little happy to hear that there's talk of untethering and creating standalone workspaces both at Aftershoot and Filter Pixel. Of course, for those of you out there who are thinking, great, still nothing for me, I hear ya. It's frustrating and all I can really suggest is to bug these systems to expand to include your preferred application. I will leave the links and emails that I was given for contacting down below. With that said, because Aftershoot currently does offer coverage to a wider audience, I will be rewarding them with the compatibility point. Moving right along with profile creation, three of these systems have very similar processes for creating a profile. Aftershoot, Imagine, and Filter Pixel each require users to upload a minimum number of previously edited images to build a profile with. It's a little more manual and depending on how you store and organize your images can be a bit time consuming just to get set up with. However, you do have full control over what's going in your profile. Narrative on the other hand introduces a new way of training, which is more automatic. All users have to do is connect to their drives that have any Lightroom catalogs on them, click the train button, and the system will go through and detect what images to include in the profile. It's less curation on the part of the user, which personally I found a bit taunting at first. However, once I realized I didn't have to export or move around any catalogs, I was much more accepting of this method. I have a whole video on Narrative's profile creation method, so if you're curious as to how it all works, you can find a lot of great info over there. The hands-off approach of Narrative's creation process was one I didn't think I would like because of how much control it does take from me. But after experiencing it, I now believe this is the best method for me that's out there. Of course, if you are someone who prefers to have control over every stage of the process, the other systems are still there for you. Personally, I just find the time I saved by not having to gather and upload incredibly valuable, which is why I'm giving my point to Narrative. Okay, so I am torn on whether I should make the time it takes to create a profile a half point a gory or a whole point a gory. I'm gonna go with a whole point and just see what happens. <laughs> From least to most time taken to train, we have Imagine at five hours and 37 minutes using 6,087 images. Narrative at five hours and 44 minutes, which ended up using 22,581 images. Aftershoot comes in at seven hours and 37 minutes using 5,436 images. And finally, Filter Pixel, which actually took a couple of days to train on 3,118 images. Even though Imagine technically came in with the faster time, we also have to look at how many images it was trained on. Narrative used almost four times the number of images Imagine did, and if we divide time by image count, Narrative processed about 66 images per minute compared to Imagine's 18. So this round's point is going to go to Narrative. While creation and training time isn't everything, it is a massive element to consider. With Aftershoot, Imagine, and Filter Pixel, getting the most optimal profile means continuously training by uploading more images and waiting for each update to process. So that initial training time you see here isn't the final amount if you want the best profile. Narrative, on the other hand, is already trained on a huge set of photos and automatically retrains in the background when you make adjustments. I do also cover all of that in more detail in my narrative video if you're curious. This next part is all about actually using the profile and how each system handles that process. I was going to lump this in with the editing results, but I think it makes more sense to split them up. There's a big difference between which platform runs the profile the smoothest and which one actually nails my editing style in the final Lightroom files. 
For my processing, I chose to use whatever AI adjustments were available to me in each system. So setup in each one was pretty much a series of slider and drop down selections, which were very easy to move through in all of the systems. For the 50 images I was using, processing times varied with after shoot and narrative taking just two minutes and filter pixel and imagine each taking five minutes. And all of these files were stored locally. After processing was finished, there wasn't much for us to do in narrative, filter pixel, and imagine other than export to Lightroom. After shoot, on the other hand, has implemented a really handy before and after feature for editing directly in their application. And while it does warn us that results may vary, it's still pretty awesome to get this first look before fully exporting. So we can know if we might want to do a rerun or change profiles. Speaking of rerunning the aftershoot edits, I did notice that even though I told it to edit 50 images, it only ended up doing 42 of them. I'm not really sure why, so it did take a second edit to get all 50 of them. Little annoying anomalies like that could keep me from giving them this point, but fortunately for them, that before and after feature is a killer addition that elevates them above the rest. All right, so before we get into our final category of looking at our profile results, it is of the utmost importance to keep in mind that these AI editing platforms are not one-click solutions. If you expect them to 100% take over editing for you, you're going to be 100% disappointed in every system you try. In this category, I'm judging the systems based on which one nails my style well enough that I barely have to touch the sliders. I know I'll always need to make a few tweaks, but the best system is the one that's going to keep those tweaks to a minimum. And I'm a little dizzy over the thought of these edits. Let's just say that some of these results were interesting. Starting with FilterPixel, who went off the rails at time with cropping. Like, it cropped this entire image down to just a pixel of sky, and that wasn't even the only photo where that happened. I can forgive if it happened once, but it happened, like, a handful of times. It also made all of the images so blue and diluted in color that I started feeling like the data I uploaded to train my AI profile wasn't even used. I would have to spend so much time adjusting every single one of these photos that it probably would be faster to just start from scratch. Aftershoot and Imagine both did lovely jobs. Most of the images have the level of warmth I like and the cropping and straightening doesn't go crazy. And the contrast has the richness that I like to see. Although some of the other adjustments get a little out of hand at times. For example, with Imagine, when looking at the masking adjustments, occasionally there is that feathery glow around the subject that indicates something has been brightened just a little bit too much. The teeth whitening with Imagine can also make things a bit uncanny at times. Not all the time, but some of the time. With Aftershoot, there are moments where the masking goes into overexposed territory as well. There's no glow, but it's still a bit much, and sometimes the vibrancy in the sky gets a bit dulled. For both, about 32% of the images would need corrections, ranging from quick exposure clicks to a bit more involved masking or color work. Narrative's edits have me really excited. A majority of them have the warmness and the contrast I like seeing, the exposure is right on for almost all of them, and the straightening adjustment straightened well for the most part. I'd say 20% of these images would need some minimal fine tuning on the brightness and some cropping to get them to a point I'd be totally happy with. I don't think it's at all surprising that the profile trained on the most amount of images did the best job capturing my style, and therefore will be capturing this final point. What I hope this category shows though, is that even a powerhouse profile that's built with 20,000 images will still need your expertise in the final review. With that point given out, we have a tie between Aftershoot and Narrative. I don't necessarily find ties that exciting, but considering the last time I did this, Aftershoot was the sole winner, I would say that narrative could be causing some good trouble in the AI photography space. I do feel a bit bad that FilterPixel and Imagine didn't get any points, but that's just how my experience and results shook out with these systems this time. Maybe in the future, the results will be a bit different, but for right now, that's what I got.
If you have a different experience with these systems, please let me know in the comments. I love hearing how the different ways we approach these systems can and do change our end results. Thank you so much for tuning in to this battle between these AI editing systems. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell so that you can be alerted whenever I release a new video. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.